Good morning guys, welcome back to Vintage Story and welcome back to Dawn, which is absolutely beautiful. I don't have the god rays on fully, you can just see them. The moon has just set, I'm standing on my balcony overlooking my area. Now I have been doing a lot of thought and a lot of preparation for the next update which is 1.10. And there are going to be several problems for me in this. Food, of course, is the first one. But also, along with food, comes a balanced diet. So if you look, look at me, I look so snazzy. But look, I'm not eating enough grains. So nutrition is going to be important. Because we have to look at this satiety. Hmm. Difficult to pronounce for me. Grain here. I would need a balanced diet, so I need to eat more grain. So that means that when we prepare meals, we're going to have to think quite carefully about this. Now, my carefree existence is about to end, and I have been doing some thinking about this. It's no use planting vast farms, because if I planted the whole of this, some of the food would go off before I was ready to use it. So what I'm doing is I have extended my farm enormously. I've doubled in size that way, but also to the right, I've added another, I'm going to call them field, because that way it looks symmetrical and balanced. And I happen to like that look. I've decided to grow one crop per field. Let's go down and have a look at this. And the reason I'm doing that is that I think that each field of mine, which is 24 crops, I think that should be enough to keep me going. I don't know yet. It's all trial and error for me from now on, once I upgrade. But I've got every crop, some more than others, apart from parsnips and pumpkins. But by having more fields that can lie fallow, look at this, horsetail. I can grow more horsetail, that's important. You know that I like to be able to harvest in the security of my own garden. So I'm growing the cattails in here because we're going to need a lot of honey. So from the crop point of view, I'm just going to have one field per crop. I haven't been collecting soya, but of course it's a substitute for protein. So I need to collect more soybeans and I only have two spelt. <laughs> so basically I've put a lot of thought into the layout of this farm. And also it's going to take longer to harvest berries. So what I've decided to do, that's a, just flowering is to move my berry bushes into a more secure area now I've started by moving into this area with these berry bushes which I'm harvesting are not in an area that is protected by light at the moment and I'm beginning to find out that one of my biggest problems is light and keeping drifters and rabbits from spawning so that's an issue that's my house at the moment so the way I've been thinking it through here is that I'm just going to need to produce more food um, yes I finally got the red current and I missed it out last time but let's just pop those in there as we go through and I've moved as you know all my food onto this floor I've actually put a well here because if I'm making stews or soups water might be useful so we now have a very nice well and I've moved all my fireplaces because I believe that eventually smoke will go upwards now at the moment I've just put these trap doors up there so that it's not a proper fireplace with uh, bricks hanging down at the moment, though it has the potential to be so. And upstairs, I've moved things around to make them more convenient as well. 
So what I've done is it's always been difficult reaching the back here and seeing what I've got on, against the cobblestone. So on a temporary basis, I've just laid out my ingots on the floor and I've moved these back and I've also put above there. Now I think those need to be open to let the fire through. So let's go and see if that actually works because upstairs I've been doing some thinking as well. So, let's see if the smoke will go through here. I don't know. It would be nice if it did. It, it looks like it has the potential to. Oh yes, it does. Look, there's a tiny, that's very faint, but yes. The smoke does come up, so these need to be open. I'm not using these at the moment. And then the smoke will come upwards. Now, I'm still building here, guys, and I've put a lot of effort because one of my problems is going to be that I like granite stone bricks. I like clay bricks as well, but they're going to need mortar. So I have been producing a lot of bricks and I've been trying my best to get this building up and running. It's going to be a greenhouse. Now normally I build greenhouses so that they are the English type of greenhouse which has a wooden base. It's then got say a too high glass side to allow for too high flowers or three high if necessary and then it goes up into an apex roof all made of glass. But the screenshots area of the uh, Vintage Story Discord is gorgeous and I've seen people who have made greenhouses just by making a square box with this granite brick round. And I think it looks stunning. And I thought it would look very good up here. These pillars, I would like to change to nickel. And also, I've not put lanterns up here yet, mostly because I've been busy lighting other areas, but I would very much like to use the new colored lanterns up here. I think it would look quite spectacular to have fairy lights in the garden. Yes, look guys. The smoke comes up now I've opened up the vents that's fantastic that's fantastic so gradually my house is improving so thinking about it then I think I'm going to grow the right amount of food for one person I don't know yet by just one field of each crop leaving the rest fallow to grow a crop that will be grass and horsetail and then using the spaces in between to grow the cattails. Now I have a problem that I've got drifters who are spawning in here and I've, I've actually made this into farmland. My assumption that may be wrong is that drifters don't spawn on stone paths, farmland or water. Now I don't know whether that assumption is correct but it's the one I've been working on. And if it's wrong, would somebody please tell me? So I think that I have food production here in terms of vegetables, grain, and soy for the protein sorted out a little bit. But obviously we're going to need a lot more meat. And this is now a rabbit trap. Strom and Sarah, thank you so much for this. Now, I think this is going to serve two purposes. One, these, these walls, they do trap the rabbits, which is great. So they will actually fall in. So I can get one meat from each rabbit. But also, look at this. I'm hoping that this is going to produce bone meal, which I think we're going to be able to use for fertilizer. So hopefully I can improve my soil with fertilizer. Now, my issue, of course, is light, is lighting this whole area up. Um, and that's actually holding me back quite a bit at the moment while I get enough light. So, so far, the rabbit trap goes to here. I am in the process of building another one over here. And obviously I have to make sure that the rabbits can actually get into the trap 
so I'm having to build up the sides and almost put like staircases for the rabbits to come up so that they can fall in. This area might end up a lot flatter than it is at the moment. In addition to that, um, I am, as I said, moving my berries into this, these areas where they're a bit more protected so that I'm hoping that when the amount of time to harvest goes up, if I want to harvest at night, I'm not going to be besieged by drifters. I think I'm going to have to extend my cattle ranch this way. So that's another project at the moment. But I've decided that I want a path this way. If you look at the large map, I've got a very good path out to my ice house here. I have a very, very good path so far out here. But what I don't have, and I've got a bit of a path here, which covers my B area, my trader, my base, but I don't have a path out this way. And it means that I haven't really fully explored this way. I came out in the desert, and sorry to put the map up again, guys, but this is where, down here, we found the desert trader, and I'd sort of been meandering. But what I haven't done is gone straight, mostly because of this huge mountain range here. Um, but I think this is going to bear a lot more exploration. So the path is going to come straight out here, I've decided. And as I go across here, it is actually a singularly beautiful area to cross. And one of the reasons for this... Oh, gosh. More turnips. Excellent. I'm collecting food wherever I can. Um, look at that beautiful tree there. This is wolf spawning area. But I'm thinking of taking a bridge across there and then tunnelling through the rest of the hillside and then continuing straight out to the south. I also have a project in mind is I'm going to need salt and I haven't found salt at all. So I need to be careful about what I do if I haven't got salt because salt is one of the great preservatives. So production of food is fine. I've got an area where I can prepare the food. If I need more food, I can obviously increase my farm or just grow more on fields. The fallow fields, they don't serve a huge amount in terms of horsetail, but they serve some. Honey I'm okay with because I have a, a huge bee area where I can produce honey. But one of the things that we're going to need for poultices is flax, which I have, and that's fine. But the other thing is sulphur. Now, this linen, even if you have a lot of flax, as I have, it takes quite a lot of flax to make linen. Flax, and Sarah and I agree on this, is quite magical at the moment because it gives you linen, it gives you string, it also gives you some uh, grain, which although is not as good as some of the other grains, it is grain, and it also enables you to feed your animals on the leftover grain. So it's a pretty spectacular plant flax. But I heard a drifter then dying. Did he jump off the roof? I wonder if I'm making a false assumption that they are... Oh, crikey! Oh my goodness, they're jumping off the roof. Oh, look at this. In the last episode, I think we saw the suicidal drifters. Oh, crikey. Having a drifter jump to its death in front of you. They must be spawning down there because this is so tall that if they spawn on the roof, they are going to die. They are going to die. Now, one of the things I also need to do is to sort out my trader. I'm going to run around at night, actually, guys. I don't normally do this. Um, 
And another thing is I'm going to have to be a lot more careful because I'm quite casual at the moment about getting into entanglements with drifters and wolves and things like that. Anyone follow me? No. Because I know I can heal easily with berries. And in fact, if I don't eat something, I'm going to die anyway. But in the next iteration, in 1.10, if we don't heal as easily and we only heal with poultices, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to tangle with creatures that you don't normally tangle with. Let's put some light around my trader, poor man. He is in darkness and I think I'm going to fence him off. You can even hear my bees from here. I think I'm going to fence him off. Then if I do want to come and trade at night, I will be safe. More light required. Now let's have a look here. Now he's a commodities trader. And the brilliant thing is that he sells sulfur. He sells linen. He sells saltpeter, which I can get anyway. Uh, oh gosh, he's got lots of linen and peat. But he wants a merchant bracelet, shoes. I want all this. This is the stuff I would love to have. Um, he will take an owl treasure chest, which I don't have. Opened wooden crates, which you can only find in ruins. And loot vessels, all he wants. Now, you might be able to pick one up in the ruin. I don't know. Or a farming loot vessel. Now, my other trader sells these loot vessels. So I might be able to buy from my trader and come back here. Goodbye. Yeah. But my great thing there is the sulphur. And also, I think he's going, he might help me with mortar. Saltpeter I have plenty of. I've mined out loads and loads and loads of saltpeter. But the fact that I will need mortar for bricks is actually worrying me. This area looks very peculiar. It looks as if some sort of spider is trying to mate with my base, which I hope it isn't. I've put arches in a little bit, which does make it look much, much better. It's amazing how much even a little bit of light counts. And the rabbit um, traps, I think, will have to go all the way around. So, thinking about my issues. Food, growth, fine. We now have a whole poultice preparation area. We can buy the sulphur. We can grow the flax. We can grow horsetail and the bees make honey. Down here we have the food preparation area where I've got buckets of honey, a little bit of food in the chests. We've got the fireplaces that needs opening at the top. We've got the well, so that's pretty well sorted out. We need another lantern there. And then down here, I have moved the lights in here. I had them totally wrong. I had them at the edges. And of course, that means that it's dark in the middle, but not at the edges. So I've solved the light problem in here. So for storage, we already have a cellar. And I think it should work. We already have nothing in there. That's the grain chest. Um, this one, we've got roots. We've got berries. And in this one... We've got eggs, mushrooms, and I'm going to put soybean and meat in here. So that sort of, I think, will work. It just depends on the height of the shelves um, and things like that. But this, I think, is a good start. I would like to vault the cellar. And Tyron says he thinks it should be okay to vault it. But um, one, I'm not sure about the dimensions of the storage chest yet. And the other is I have a funny feeling that if I put, say, an upside down stair there to start giving a vaulting look, I just wonder whether the game is going to see that as a block through which light might shine. So I'm being a bit circumspect about that. I'll wait and see. Yeah, I had another... I tell you, these drifters are really jumping off the roof at the moment. Uh, as you know, we have two charcoal areas here. 
but when food goes off, as it inevitably will, we're going to have to compost it. I don't want, we should compost outside, but we've got an area here that I think could be used for compost and coming around through here, it's quite a dark area at the moment. Let's just put some light up in case we get drifters. But my thought on this one is that if I take this wall down, yeah, that's right, that's it. And uh, just take these two up, give myself a bit more room here. Is that right? Does that need to come down? I don't know. I'd have to have a look at outside. I think probably I could give myself, yes, just that bit more room. Good. And my thought, depending on how the compost goes, is to put a composter in here then it's not on the same floor as the food preparation. Um, and it would fit in with charcoal burners, I think. So that's where I'm thinking of putting that. So I've got a little bit of planned storage underway. So on the food side, I think I've done as much preparation as I can for 1.10 with the thought to preservation, storage and nutrition. Healing, I've done as much preparation as I can. With regard to the difficulty now of making bricks, I think I'm going to, I've got 56 granite rock that I'm going to turn into granite stone bricks uh, before, in fact, we could do that now. Uh, and that will, I think, it's a bit of, is it a cheat to make something easier for yourself when you're playing single player? When you know, oh, I need, um, oh, it's here. When you know that you're going to, wow, that's a lot. Okay, a um, bit more than I thought there. Good, all to the good. Uh, right, let's just throw sticks out of the way. Keep my chisel. But I th I'm thinking that it would be very, very sensible to do as much preparation as I can. One of the issues is that I'm not sure I've found all the stuff I need to make mortar and buying it is going to be a complete and utter pain. So let's see if we can just get our supply of stone up. Have we got enough to make a complete sack, stack? Not a sack, but a stack. That would be really nice, guys. And a great, oh, not quite. All right, okay. Sadness. <laughs> but all is not lost. Not quite a complete stack. Oh, actually a stack and a half. <laughs> That's even better, guys. So, we now have a stack and a half. But these get used up so quickly. Granite cobblestone. So that's preparation for the lack of of being able to make these things easily. So, food, growth, preservation, storage, healing, everything. But do you know the one thing that I'm not going to be able to help myself with very much? Time, guys. Time. Time and tide, stand still, for no man or woman. And I have a funny feeling that I'm gonna spend an awful lot more time with dealing with food, cooking, preparation, and storage than is ideal. Now this has taken me a lot of time to do, but I'm very happy about this because this has been a huge step forwards in getting the farm laid out as I want it. 
The seller has taken time to get right. I'm happy with that. That's taken a lot of uh, work away. And from when I'm, we have 1.10, and it's already going to make my life easier. I just have to make the storage chests to go in it. A huge amount of time has made in getting the lighting correct in here, and I'm still a bit short on lighting, but that's time very well spent. Um, and I'm just going to see my bees again too, because the time that I spent getting the lighting correct is time that I won't spend fighting off drifters. And if I fight drifters, then I have to heal afterwards, and that means more poultices. So getting more and more light in this build, and also now it's going to have to be in the garden as well, is going to help me enormously in not having to heal. And we've got a lantern up there. So... I think that for the future I need to find some form of salt and I know or I believe that in the next update I think that the salt is going to be more prevalent so I'm going to start running my uh, pathway out that way but at the moment I haven't generated vast amounts in that direction. So I need to find salt deposits and I'm not sure where I'm going to find them. I need to extend my animals, that's fine, that's all doable. And I'm gradually taking this hill down so that we, I don't think we have it yet. We can't quite see it, but on that hillside there, those are the beautiful lilacs, but I do like being able to see further in that direction. One of the reasons I like it is that that's where there's a huge wolf spawning area over there and it's pretty well over the cave mouth where I go to get my quartz. We've got hens laying eggs in there which is very happy making. We've got drifters getting stuck everywhere but this I think I've done as much as I can to make my life easier for the next iteration so let's just hope that all this preparation work has been worthwhile and that I don't have to spend too much time just preparing, preserving and cooking food. Okay guys, if any of this logic is faulty, could you please tell me? Bye bye.